Okay, okay. It's time to do. Just make sure that's set up and you can actually see me and I haven't cut my head off because that's my usual thing. It's time to do my review of the Pontus Nessie. I got a fresh coffee. So uh, yeah, so anyway, I follow a page on Instagram called HMB Watches. And the guy is a French Canadian, Canadian, and um, and he has collection of awesome Panerai watches. And if you're not familiar with Panerai, Panerai are an Italian uh, watchmaker who uh, originally uh, started making diving equipment and gauges, depth gauges and things like that, I think, and uh, then started making um, stuff for the Italian military. Anyway, Panerai make awesome looking watches, real stylish, uh, quite a statement watch, large watches. And um, and I follow this guy, HMB Watch, he's got a great collection of Panerai's, but he also posts a few obscure brands, uh, boutique brands and, and this sort of thing. And um, he posted up a picture of this uh, brass, which I love, uh, diving watch called a Pontus. And I saw it, I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Um, uh, I clicked through to, like, to find a website and all the rest of it and saw that it wasn't a terribly expensive watch. I mean... So I'm calling an expensive watch something that costs thousands and an inexpensive watch something that costs hundreds. And it's also important to mention that in terms of watches, you know, I'm really talking automatic watches, you know, watches with a movement, not battery powered watches because, you know, that's not really, battery powered watches are cool if that's, if that's your thing, I've got one, but um, it's not really like you know this the weird watch fascination that I have is does not really go doesn't really go as far as battery powered watches anyway there's really not that much information uh, on the internet about Pontus there's if you go to the website there's a brief uh, description as to why the name Pontus and you know the sort of basics of the brand and uh, what the watch basically entails and then just a link to buy it now I'm not I'm not a watch nerd, like I'm not a watch nerd, I couldn't tell you what movement is in uh, a fucking Rolex GMT Master 2 or what movement is in a Panerai Luminor, I couldn't tell you really the difference, um, but I do know that there are, for guys who are on my sort of uh, uh, budget, uh, there there's lots of uh, great companies that do um, I want to say inexpensive, you know, in it, like where you can get a lot of bang for your buck. So I am, I am saving and planning on buying something more, uh, you know, you know, more expensive. But um, for the meantime, I kind of want to be able to buy and enjoy and collect watches. But you know, I'm balling on a budget. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not balling for real. So look, it's all those cigars. So anyway, let, let me show you. So I've been wearing it for a week now. I, if you saw my last video, you would have seen that it came in this cool little box and I did the little unboxing. So I'm not going to do a proper unboxing now, but we'll go through it. But he's only making 300. I forget his name, Italian guy. He's only making 300 and I, I got number 27. So, um, and I know that they are selling pretty swiftly. I've seen a couple pop up and uh, um, one of my Instagram bros um, pale horse powerlifting. I know that he's ordered one as well because this is like this is a man's watch. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, so when you get the watch, it comes in this cool box, kind of this little booklet with a warranty card that it comes with, and all that stuff. And uh, there's some information here, and it tells you about the movement. So right, so just for reference, because. Obviously, it's quite difficult to tell. So, this is a 47 millimeter case watch. So that's pretty big. I tend to get away with it because um, I think because I've got a lot of tattoos, watches kind of tend to, I don't know, they kind of like tend to blend in a little bit unless I wear a silver watch and it kind of really pops. But but watches like this, they tend to, they don't look too big on me. And I don't think I've got necessarily large wrists, but I do have quite large hands. So. So, um, ladies, and uh, so anyway, watch comes with um, 
and it came on a leather strap and I've swapped them over because I wanted to try the uh, camouflage so it comes with the um, a, a silicon rubber camouflage strap in blue and the diet and this uh, beeswaxed distressed blue leather strap as well and you can't really tell f probably not going to come up on the camera but the the face the uh, dial face is is uh, a really really rich deep blue but it looks pretty much black when you look at it the strap that it came on is awesome quality um, I I never I've never worn a leather strap watch before ever so um, so I haven't spent any time with this one on but I did I did uh, put it straight onto the uh, the camouflage one because I just thought it looked pretty sweet I wanted to see what it looked like the two straps obviously the watch itself get the little warranty card and the basic information on the watch telling you all the stuff 47 mil blah 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 not sure if this is normal but you also get another you also get another little buckle in silver like a, or you know stainless steel or whatever that is I think that might be to go on the silicon strap or if you get another leather strap you get the little the little tool it's got a little punch and a little uh, thing to remove the little rods so we can do your strap changes and you also get or I got my this is obviously my receipt for it so yeah uh, Juan Pablo Jose Manzilla is the name of the gentleman who owns the company that make the Pontus. I believe he may be flying solo and just making these watches himself. At 47 mil, case size, brass, which patinas over time. If you if you don't know about brass, it obviously, you know, it creates a patina. Like when it first showed up, it was quite bright and but it ages and it starts looking a bit like you know, sort of, it develops its own character and depending how you wear it and why, where you wear it, it will sort of take on your, take on sort of the characteristics of that, which I think is super cool, right? Um, the movement, and this is the, this is what sort of like was the uh, kicker for me while I bought it. The movement's a Seiko NH35A, which is kind of like a workhorse movement. So. There's a lot of other watch manufacturers out there that don't make their own uh, movements, obviously, like uh, budget brands like Invicta, and, which are hideous watches, but they do a, they do, do a line of uh, diving watches that aren't too bad, and the movements are pretty good, solid, you know, just workhorse movements. So Seiko, Seiko are just as solid as they come. I thought that was great. Sapphire Crystal, 32 mil di diameter um, face. 200 meters water resistance. Uh, the strap is 24 mil. It's blasted brass. The case and bezel. What was it like to wear? Brutal honesty. It's not the most comfortable. It weighs a ton, and uh, it's not the most comfortable watch I've ever worn. The uh, crown guard here, and the crown itself is a hex. It often will dig into my the back of my hand. I wore it to work a couple of times when I was just at the office uh, doing some manufacturing stuff and um, and niggled a little bit, man. It's not it's not a comfortable watch. I bought this as an alternative to uh, my Paddy, which is a stainless steel diving watch. You know, something that's a little bit more sort of like conventional. This is something a little bit different. The you know this. This is a bit more of like a stunt piece, man. Something, something to put on at the weekends or, or uh, you know, when you're in the mood for it. When I was adjusting the uh, time from the, the crown, um, I felt that the that was a little bit, sort of felt a little bit fragile. Like I had to be quite gentle with it. Um, whereas other watches, you can be a bit more like, Ugh. it feel like the strongest, you know, but, you know is what it is. The other issue that I did have is when I first, when it first arrived, I went to twist the bezel and it wouldn't twist. And I, and I was really confused. I was, and I was looking at it. And if you look at the watch closely, it looks almost like one piece. And I thought, well, you know, I'm pretty sure I saw or read that, you know, it's a, it's a diver's watch. It's a, 
the bezel should work. Surely I haven't bought a watch where it's just the bezel's just there for cosmetics, like a fixed bezel. But so I'm twisting it and I'm trying to twist it the other way. Obviously not trying to like break the watch, but like you know I've got a pretty firm grip and I'm and it's not going fucking anywhere. So I go, I have a look in the book and I'm flicking through and it it's. It talks about how to work, how to use the bezel, like I'm fucking missing something somehow. Sure enough, in the book, it says the bezel works. I sent the guy, the I sent uh, Pontus Watches a message on Instagram and said, uh, the watch looks great, but the bezel doesn't work. And uh, he got back to me straight away and said, oh yeah, sometimes happens, uh, it's just a... This is just something that happens in transit. Humidity somehow, like because it's brass, the humidity, something happens with the gasket here and it can stick. Make sure the crown guard's down tight and just pop it in a bowl of warm water for a minute, if that. Not hot, warm. And I thought, that's really weird. And judging from how fucking, I mean, it was dark, man. And I thought, that's really strange. And I couldn't imagine that was going to help, but anyway, did what he said, filled a, filled a cup up with some water and I just plonked the watch straight in it for 30 seconds, took it out and the bezel just worked beautifully and I, I was really weirded out by that, I thought that was the strangest thing ever, so, um, but speaking of the bezel, the bezel action on this watch is beautiful, it's really nice and it feels really quality, feels really precise, the ticks are just it's a really nice sound and the bezel pip lines up perfectly without any play so that's always a good sign that's something that Seiko can't even get right my favorite thing about the watch in general is the the patina I mean it's literally started taking on its own patina now and uh, it just every day it looks a little bit different but it's um it's very cool and I also like the size a couple of people have commented on it and and said that it's, they they like it it goes with certain outfits nicely but it just feels like a bit of a stunt watch it's a great alternative so so I'm gonna give it oh one other thing I would comment on is that the strap the rods, the strap rods that fix the strap into place. You know, when I first removed the strap and changed it over, you know, I thought, are they are they strong enough? You know, are they strong enough for a, maybe it needs like more like heavy duty ones, but they've held up fine. So, you know, and I've been yanking on it and testing it, and and I, I've I've given it a couple of bashes as well, not on purpose, obviously, but I've I've bashed it on the desk a couple of times, and and uh, it's not scratched or marked or anything, but. Weirdly enough, it's the kind of watch that if you did scratch it or dent it or nick it, it would probably just add to its character and make it look even cooler because it's got that kind of steampunk vintage, you know, look. And also, I've been looking online at um, sort of independent strap makers and stuff like that and just getting all psyched about the different kinds of straps you could put on it and, it, you know. So, for the money, and it cost me, I can't remember exactly, it's less than 300 quid, I think. I think it's about two, 290 quid, something like that. I think that's an awesome watch. You're not going to get anything that looks like that and, uh, and is as solid and as well made uh, for the money. Plus the fact that it's a, uh, they're obviously a, got a good, a good customer service thing going on. You know, like, like I said, when I had an issue with the bezel, I had it sorted within 10 minutes, you know, of, no, of messaging. And the presentation in general, I think it's awesome, you know, all the details. Um, one other thing that is probably worth mentioning is Pontus recommend changing the seals every three to five years. So, and you can send the watch directly back to uh, Pontus at your expense and um, they will change the seals and service and all that sort of stuff. The cost of that, I don't know, but for an automatic watch, they take a little bit of care and all the rest of it. Another thing worth mentioning is that I didn't keep this watch in a watch winder for the days, the, for the period of time that I didn't wear it. I just left it on my dresser and uh, it didn't stop. It kept going. So um, I'm pretty sure you could leave this out of watch wind for a couple of days and it's going to be fine. 
But yeah, overall, a really cool, solid watch that looks stunt. I think even watch guys are going to be into that. I know I fucking am. I've got a promo code for the Nessie. I'm not being paid or I'm not affiliated with Pontus in any way, shape or form. They've given me a promo code that I can share with you guys and uh, I'm going to be putting it on my Instagram when this video goes live. So if you follow me on Instagram, um, head over there and you'll see a promo code and you can use that. And I'll be doing another watch review on the Seiko Paddy. Um, obviously, I'm not a watch geek, I'm not a watch nerd, and I didn't, you know, I've, I've seen other watch reviews and they talk about the movement and this and that and that and the other and all the technical shit and really a lot of us, a lot of us don't give a fuck about that stuff, you just want to know does it work, does it lose time, does it gain time, is it solid and uh, how is it to actually live with the watch. So um, instead of going into all the details about that stuff, I'm sure you can do research on the movement itself. From what I know, um, it's that's as as solid as they come and for the money you ain't gonna get much better and it's a super super stylish watch and that people will notice and comment and a great great conversation starter and people are gonna ask you about it and if you're a bigger dude stylistically you're a bit like me you're like the tough rugged thing uh, then this is definitely a bit of you so uh, it's probably worth checking out don't forget to uh, subscribe if you like this video, like the video if you like the video, and uh, leave in the comments and let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you intend to get one or uh, if any any uh, watches you might think that I should check out. Um, yeah, put, me, put it in the comments and be sure to uh, get back to all of you. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe and subscribe and uh, for more videos like this and some more cigar stuff coming your way real soon. and. Uh, Please let me know any comments what you think of this watch. Would you rock it? Do you think it's disgusting? Let me know. I think it's awesome. Right, see you next time.